of our show, Anything Goes. We have a special edition. This show is going to cover several days right before Christmas. As you can see, I'm surrounded with a very Christmassy friends. All of them are wearing very Christmas clothes. And we have a very exciting show for you. One of our friends is outside in the street, freezing in cold. And he is now actually standing by Rockefeller Center near to a very famous tree. Chris? Chris, can you hear me? Well, yes, Uncle Henny. How is everything in Rockefeller Center? An integral part of the success of the event is choosing the perfect tree. All year round, people send in pictures of their tree in hopes that it will be chosen as Rockefeller Center's Christmas tree. The minimum dimensions for the tree must be 65 feet by 35 feet. But usually the tree ranges anywhere from 75 to 90 feet tall. The tree is actually traveling on a telescoping trailer. It can stretch up to 100 feet and carry a tree up to 125 feet. Approximately 15 to 20 men and a 280 ton. All terrain, a hydraulic crane is going to be used to handle the tree. is transported from its home in New York City and it travels in the middle of the night with police escort on route to disrupt as little traffic as possible. The route is carefully planned with local police and those in Manhattan to ensure its safe transportation and arrival in Rockefeller Center. My friend Michael here, can you tell us, can you tell everyone what you know about the Norwegian spruce tree that stands at Rockefeller Center? Oh, well what I do know about the tree is that after the tree gets cut, the head gardener at Rockefeller Center will actually count the number of rings at the tree stump so he can get a better measurement of the tree's age actually. Wow, thank you so much Mike. And no a Merry problem, Christmas man. to you. Merry Christmas okay. to you too, man. Once at Rockefeller Center, the tree is supported by four guy wires and a steel spike at its base. Scaffolding is put up all around the tree to assist workers in putting up the 30,000 lights attached to five miles, or approximately eight kilometers, of wiring. The star that has topped the tree has been there since 2004 and is approximately three meters in diameter and weighs 550 pounds. The Swarovski star was created by the German artist Michael Hammers. The decorated Christmas tree remains lit at Rockefeller Center until the week after New Year's Day when it is removed and recycled for a variety of uses. This is an area that is visited by arguably the world's most celebrated ice skating. The rink at Rockefeller Center offers breathtaking views. The famous gilded stone statue of Prometheus bringing, to, bringing fire to mankind by sculptor Paul Manship. These angels, thousands of people taking pictures, crowding around these angels. These beautiful, magnificent representations of the angels blowing their trumpets, telling of the birth of Christ. This really, truly is a merry, merry Christmas. So this is Christopher Awad from CYC at Rockefeller Center. I hope everyone has a great night. Back to you, Uncle Henry. Chris, thank you very much. And as you have seen, guys, that was uh, the Rockefeller Center, the main thing in New York, I'm sure. Sarah, you went for the first time? Yeah, me and Marianne for the very first, I went for the very first time. And it was, it was such an experience. I've never seen anything what like What did you like the most there? I. I was act I liked the lights and the tree and everything that was beautiful and there was a free concert but I was most surprised to see the crowd. That was incredible. So you it like was it like because it's free, right? I like the fr the free is definitely the best part. <laughs> yeah. Uh, actually, let me ask everybody 
where is this tree came about to be so important, almost symbolic of Christmas? Does anyone, Lydia, you want to comment? Well, when I was growing up in Egypt, I always asked my mom why we didn't have like real Christmas trees. And she told me the Christmas tree was just something that grew in winter. And that's the reason we didn't have it, because Egypt was too warm. And so I always thought the Christmas tree was associated with Christmas was because of that. But I think that's not right. OK. Does anyone know where is the tree came from as far as Christmas? Do you know? I mean, I really have no idea. My whole life I remember having a tree for Christmas, but I have no idea where the tree came from. I think, I think it comes from Canada. Is that true where I'm from? She's very uh, prejudiced towards Canada. But actually, no, it came from North Germany. And that was actually back in the uh, 14th, 16th century. And then spread to all over Europe. And then came to America. And now there is something called uh, the National Christmas Tree, where uh, Jimmy Carter in 1979 have lit the first tree and since that time became sort of a, a tradition. Every president during the Christmas, prior to Christmas week will light it in the south lawn of the White House. Um, but regardless of what or where the tree came from, um, how often do you see Christ picture in Christmas cards? And how, what is the percentage of finding the tree. Marianne, what, what, what's your observation here? I actually don't see it very often. I think the only thing we do see um, are, is the small manger. So you'd have St. Mary and Joseph, and it, it would usually be in front of churches or um, you know, on small Christmas cards. But really, there isn't too much affiliation um, yeah. between Jesus Christ and Christmas. Mark, what do you think? Yeah, actually. Um I thought the Christmas tree was symbolic of, of the cross, and the lights on the Christmas tree was symbolic of, of Christ, the light of the world. And um, the ornaments were, were like us, the fruits of, of the light of the world. So I, I thought this would have probably been a meaning of it. Very good. Actually, Mark is very right. In the Bible, there is Genesis, at least. There was two main trees. Everybody knows the tree of knowledge of evil and good. But the tree that most of us don't know is the tree of life. That was in the middle of the paradise. And when Adam was expelled, he was forbidden from eating from the tree of life. And when you get to the book of Revelation, uh, and you read, that's the beginning, Genesis, and then you get to the book of Revelation, you see that in Revelation 2, it talks about Whoever overcomes, I'll make him eat from the tree of life. And when you get to the very last chapter of Revelation 22, it says, And in the middle of its street and on either side of the river was the tree of life, which bore 12 fruits, each tree yielding its fruit every month. The leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. So the tree of life is the real tree very much symbolic of Christ himself, the cross. Some people say also it's a symbolic of communion. W what do you think of these things? Have you ever heard these things before? Or what do you, what do you take from all of that? It's really beautiful to hear these types of uh, kind of descriptions of what the Christmas tree originated from. But I can definitely assure you that at least from my own end perspective and from what I know a lot of my friends see, that the Christmas tree, when we look at it immediately, that's not what first comes to our mind. Right. You know, uh, we see the, uh, the red and the green, and we automatically think of Christmas. We automatically think of our, you know, of other, other things besides, like, the real reason for the season. <laughs> Speaking of the colors, have anyone thought of where the red and green came from? The red and green and maybe the white. I mean, we have here what? Red, green, and we don't have white, but right, you have it white. <laughs> you have white too. Actually, in Revelation 4, 
before the throne of God there was three colors there was the white indicating his righteousness the redness indicating his redemption but you could have not approached except through the, ra the rainbow where it was an emerald green and maybe you guys have a lot of green so you should be proud of that that to reach the throne of God you have the light the bright, li the bright light white and then the bright red and then the emerald green um, coming back to your point and maybe I could ask Lydia again since I started with you among your work workers co-workers how often would they actually put Christ on the tree or actually put Christ instead of the tree that's actually really funny because um, last Christmas they they put up a, a menorah and when one of the co-workers suggested that we put up a manger they said no 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 that's too controversial so it's okay to celebrate Hanukkah and celebrate like the the Jewish holiday but to celebrate Christ was not appropriate to do during Christmas and to them that was just such a like a shocker I don't know if you guys heard about, like, I heard some politicians recently were saying that we should change the Christmas tree and make it into a holiday tree. That it, should, it no longer should be called, like, the Christmas tree. It should now be called the holiday tree. Right. Makar, you want to comment? I mean, I, this is, I just started my job, and in my company, they made a very elaborate tree. And then they also had a menorah a few days before, and they're lighting each, uh, each candle at, at the appropriate times. But there's nothing that has to do with Christ, in, mm. at least uh, that, that you can realize right away. Right. Um, I really would like all our friends who are listening to us to know that even though you may have a tree in your house, you may have so many ornaments in your tree, but without Christ, there couldn't have been Christmas. There will not have been festivity. There are no types of celebrations without Christ. And even if the secular world is pushing us towards a Christmas without Christ, let us know without Christ, we do not have the tree of life. And without Christ, there is no Christmas. I hope you enjoyed this session of Anything Goes. And we see you tomorrow with another episode of Anything Goes Christmas in New York. Have a blessed night.